It's your girl Tania. Hey y'all, if you're not subscribed, subscribe right now. If you are subscribed, I love you, I love you, I love you. So yes, go ahead and like this video, leave a comment because you know I reply back. And actually, I am replying to one of my comments that I had about the narcissist abuse and just dealing with a narcissist, period. So <clears throat> let's get into it. So now, um, first things first, I want to just basically tell you guys that when dealing with a narcissist, you will be in fear that if you do do something like, you know, um, contact the authorities or call the police or try to get any type of help, they will come for you. They will. And fear not, says the Lord, right? Because if you believe in God like I do, which I hope that you do, no matter what happens, God's going to always come to rescue you. Like there's no way that you're going to pray to God and God is just going to leave you where you're at. Okay. So there's no reason to fear because I was in fear, a lot of fear. Um, when I was dealing with this narcissist, because he would say things like, you better not call the police. I'll break your neck. I'll kill you. Da, 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 right. So I just used to be like, you know what? No, because there's no way in heck that I'm going to just be feared for the rest of my life from somebody that I don't even like. And I know that they don't like me for real. They just want to control me. Right. So boom, I said, you know what? First of all, I had let like someone know, like, what was going on so they were like you need to call the police if this narcissist keep on coming to your house because the narcissist was coming to my house broke down my door so what happened was he felt that somebody was over there and so because he thought somebody was over there he was banging 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 and i wasn't answering so of course his mind was playing tricks on him at this point so he was like you know what b-i-t-c-h like he was knocking from like Let's just say 12 o'clock all the way till 5 o'clock in the morning. He stopped a little bit, like around 3. And then like as soon as 5 o'clock hit, almost 6 o'clock in the morning, he just knocked the door down. And mind you, I was in the room with my kids and the big kids were asleep. So the little kids woke up instantly, right? And was afraid. And so he's walking around the house. I finally knocked the door up off the hinges. I couldn't even believe it because not only was I praying, but when you pray, God says that it will be formed against you, but it will not prosper. So, okay, knocking the door down is not harming me. You know, it's not prospering to me. It's not getting to me and you're putting your hands on me and killing me. So, boom, that's where my faith was at the whole time. So, when it came off the hinges, he walked in or whatever. He's looking around, looking around. And he's like, oh, um, where that, where that nigga at? Da, 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 da. So, I just was looking at him like... You look dumb, right? So, of course, I'm bold because I'm mad at this point. And I'm like, I'm not about to show fear so that he could just run all over me, right? So, I'm like, it's nobody here. I'm like, so what are you doing but scaring your kids? I'm like, you look so dumb. Like, are you happy? Did you get what you want? He like, yeah, just make sure you tell that nigga da -da -da -da, and told me what to tell him. I said, no, you tell him. He like, well, yeah, when I see him, I'm going to do da -da -da -da. So, I just was like, yeah, I right, right? So, he walked out. And of course, he ended up texting me, calling me. This is before I changed my number. I just changed my number like a few months ago. So um, I'm like looking at the text messages. So I text him back like, you need to pay for that door. So he was like, yeah, I will. I'll pay any price. I'll pay for that stupid door, whatever. So I ended up coming up with the money on my own without his money. And I paid for it. It was like 300 and something dollars. And I put like double locks on it. So... He only sent me like $116. So what I did was I sent it back. He sent it through Cash App. I sent it back. He's going back and forth with me, refunding it back. I'm refunding it to him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Hold on, y'all. I'm mothering. Yeah, she upstairs. How'd she get up here? This is like a lie, but you know, I don't want to stop the video, you guys. I want to keep on continuing with the story. She is the climber. So just a second. Okay, so I'm back, y'all. Okay, I got a little baby queen. Look at mama. She's so congested. I have to snot in her nose back out in a second. So, so we kept refunding back the money. He was being real petty. I was too, because I wanted him to know. I don't need your money and it's not enough and I already paid for it so what ended up happening was I said you know what I don't want this to happen no more so let me I'm out of breath y'all because I went down the stairs I said let me let him know that I'm really not playing so I ended up saying I'm going to um call the police 
and I'm gonna let them know that somebody is hounding me at my door. Da da da, -da knocked my door down. So, because I was in fear, I didn't even call that day. I waited. When I waited, he came again, knocking again after the door was fixed. So I'm like, you just don't get it. Like, you know, like you have a serious problem. So let me tell you why he don't get it. Cause this is what I left out. And I don't really leave out too many things, but I want to just touch on, you know, when you're in fear and what things can happen, what things can happen when you're in fear. That's why you shouldn't be in fear. So before this, when I was pregnant, I had already got a restraining order on him already, but I didn't go through with it. So when you get a restraining order, you go get the restraining order, you go downtown or wherever the place is, the court building, and you go get it. And so when I went to go get it, the devil is alive because it was a lady in there that works there that was trying to argue with me. And I was there for like four or five hours and she was arguing with me, telling me, I'll make it to where you won't get the um, restraining order. I said, okay. So I walked out. And the man was like, no, finish your, your paperwork because you do got to come back in three weeks. So I finished it. But then because I got into it with her and I was just so over it, I never went back. So when you don't go back after the three weeks, like to follow up on the restraining order, basically it doesn't like complete. Oh, great. Now this narcissist thought that he had the upper hand because there was no paper served to him. Of course, I didn't say anything to him about it until he made me mad. Like, that's why I got a restraining order on you. And he was like, well, I didn't get no restraining order. It's like he already knew how it worked because somebody probably had a restraining order on him before. So it just made me mad, like, ill, right? So next, since I didn't do that, he looked at me like, you're not going to go through with calling the police on me or go through with anything so since i didn't do that he felt like you're not gonna go through with anything because you didn't go through with the restraining order so he kept coming so finally i was just like you know what i'm calling the police so when i did call the police they came to my house the police took forever the police took so long to come that he was downstairs calling my phone he watched them when they left and as soon as they left he called my phone sending me text messages like, you think I'm that dumb? I looked at everything that went on. Actually, I talked to them after they left and we were just laughing about you. So I just was looking at him like, he think it's really a joke. So a few days later, he came again. I called the police again. And I was like, you know what? They taking too long again. So I'm about to leave now and I'm about to go to the police station. The police station was closed because it was nighttime. He always comes real late. And so... I was just pissed off, right? So then the next day I say, you know what? I need to make a report of this. So I went in the daytime, I made a report. And after that, I just called him. I was like, I made a report. If you do anything, I will um, get a restraining order on the spot. So I will get a restraining order on the spot if you come the next time, because that's what they told me that they'll do since I didn't go through it, since I didn't go through with it the last time. And he was just like, so you really going to do that? You really going to put the white man in our business? I said, no, what you doing? You're putting the white man in your business because you're jeopardizing your own life. And if you don't care, I'll bring up how I know that you went to jail for stalking somebody or giving threats or whatever you did. I said, so you will be in jail messing with me, pure point blank. After that, you guys, it died down a little bit until he started making the threats again. All it takes is for somebody, you know, to like me on instagram or somebody to him to see something or hear something somebody could call him and tell him a lie and he'll call my phone like is it true i really begin to think that sometimes he will make up things that people supposedly said just to start an argument with me so it got weird it got really weird and so um i was like you know what the police is not gonna do nothing at this point but he did not come but i feel like if something else was to happen i was just praying 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 like god don't let anything transpire to where it does have to happen but if it does happen then i know you got me and that was just that like i was like praying against the evil i was praying against the bad just vibes that he had over my life so that was my story with that and would i advise anybody because you know i always have my advice because i am a living proof of you know, dealing with a narcissist, and this is fresh. This is only like a few months ago um, that I just left. What I advise people to do, don't have no fear. Do whatever you have to do. Whether that's call the authorities, even if they don't help. I heard that the more you call the police or the more um, like 
reports you have, the more serious it will begin to look because they're so used to people having domestic violence and, you know, back talking to the guy or the girl the next few days. Look at Blueface and Krishan. Like, don't nobody take nobody serious, especially somebody who's black. They look at this all day. Oh, yeah, you're getting into an argument. Oh, yeah, that's your the father of your child. Oh, yeah, why didn't you go through with the restraining order? Oh, it must not be that serious. Okay, when the last time you guys talked, you know? So don't have no fear. Do what you got to do. And have faith in God that, you know, things is going to work. Number two, move away. Number three, no contact with this narcissist. Number four, don't play with this narcissist. Don't even go back to this narcissist. They showed their true colors already. So they don't even have no, like, like they don't have no space in your life. Like they don't have a right to be in your life. You know, they don't, they, they shouldn't be able to be blessed with you in their presence. Anyway, it really makes me mad because I really realize like how people don't take this serious. And this is why I'm talking about it, because this is not just a topic. This is a very serious topic that is pushed under the rug and people don't know how to deal with it, you know, and like think of a plan. Think of a plan of what you're going to do with this narcissist. If you have left the narcissist, be proud of yourself that you have left because it could have went left. Narcissism is a deadly disease to me because I feel like they put so many people's lives in jeopardy, including their own. Um, it could really put you in like a, a whirlwind of things. Um, I'm seeing the narcissist go through so much right now. They're always going to live in like this type of karma, you know, um, they keep on going. They don't stop. This is why the karma keeps on coming. Because how I feel about karma is when you do something bad, something happens instantly. And sometimes it takes a long time. But when you keep on doing the same thing over and over, you can only expect for your past to come and haunt you. Because you ain't never stopped. You ain't never stopped. You pick, You pick. You may pick a different profession or you may deal with different people, but you're still doing the same things. And you wonder why, right? Or a narcissist is not wondering why. And they keep on going and they don't care. So anybody who is in the presence of a narcissist, get away and get away fast, okay? And it will be okay. So that's my story time on the police not helping me, on, you know, contacting the authorities, on I had to take things, matters into my own hands and do whatever I have to do. Um, I advise you not to fear. I'm going to keep on saying that because the narcissist can really have you fearing them and just fearing everybody, not trusting nobody, looking at everybody like they're the same just because of what the narcissist has put you through. So I love you guys and I will be back in the next one. I'm going to drop another video tonight too. I love you. Bye.